I feel like I'm getting baited to make a video. Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Ask Sebi, and today we are going to react to CNBC's Make It, specifically a video about a couple who spent $18,000 to go to Bora Bora. As always, there's going to be a chapter scroll down below. We'll react to the video and then talk about how you can do this using points. Big favor from you guys, give this a thumbs up because it helps with the algorithm and because other people might find this and save $15,000. If you are someone new here, we talk about how to use your everyday spend and do cool trips like this. If that sounds interesting, then consider subscribing. Is an $18,500 trip to French Polynesia worth it? So travel for me is everything. I've been to 39- Conrad Bora Bora. Countries so far and French Polynesia will be my 40th. So I actually didn't choose French Polynesia for my trip. My boyfriend did. Very expensive taste. For his birthday, we decided to make a trip of that. Also, pretty cool picture there. $18,500. That's crazy to me. And I feel like you don't need to spend that long there personally. I feel like you can get away with seven days or 10 days. But yeah, just depends on you. My name is Capricia Alston. I'm a remote copywriter in the Washington DC area, and I'll be traveling to three islands in French Way Polynesia, past. which include Tahiti, Morea, and Bora Bora. Easiest way to think of Bora Bora is that it's strategically located between New Zealand, also Hawaii, and I know this because I did like a history tour the first time we went there. Two on the east, two on the south, 5,000 American GIs came here on Bora Bora, 1942, after Pearl Harbor. I spend about 30% of my salary on travel, but I live with my boyfriend. We split the cost of living. That's a lot of money to spend on travel. Like as someone who likes to travel and I feel like I spent the same amount going on 15 trips in 2019. I don't have any kids and I don't have a car note. So I think that combo really allows me to travel and spend more on my travel lifestyle. I took a flight from IAD, which is Washington Dulles, to San Francisco, had a layover in San Francisco. In case anyone's considering this themselves, you pretty much have to either fly to San Francisco or LAX in order to get to Tahiti because of the flights involved. You could actually use points for this, but unless you're booking business class, I generally feel like it's not really worth it. And then had a direct flight from there to Tahiti. So Tahiti is kind of the entry point over there, and then you can go to the other islands like Morea and Bora Bora. Tahiti by itself, I would say it's not that interesting. Most people generally do one day there or two days there, and then they go to their next destination. We stayed in Tahiti for two days. From Tahiti, we went to Morea. Morea is a pretty interesting one because it's the same vibe, it's a lot more chill, and it's a lot cheaper. You could probably do it and get away with telling people that you went to Bora Bora and no one would really know unless they've been to Bora Bora. For five days. And then from Morea, we went to Bora Bora for five days. What I use for this particular trip is just Google Flights. And that's where I start the base of any of my traveling. I always start with Google Flights to just scan all of the airlines and figure out you know, when it's cheapest. And that's a pretty good move. I still do that a lot. So if it's not an interesting flight, I'll just generally fly economy or look for a good deal because that's fine. Nine seventy. We fine. purchased just basic economy, which was great because the flight was practically empty. And so we were actually able to upgrade for free. Wait, what? So she flew basic economy and got an upgrade for free. I don't think that generally happens, even if you have status, because that's one of the reasons people don't book basic economy. Four hotels. In Tahiti, we stayed at two different places. For one stay, it was about $400. And then- I think 300 to 400 is fine. The travel zoo voucher, which was five days in Morea, that totaled around $2,000, but that also included free breakfast. And then it also included, you know, a lot of just free activities on the hotel. For free breakfast, you could actually get that pretty easily of status as well. So maybe not that valuable over there, especially because there's cards that have a $95 annual fee that will get you that gold status. And then if you're willing to pay a little bit more and also get credits and additional nights, you can actually get diamond status pretty easily. $1,200 is actually pretty good. The overwater room in Conrad could easily run 
$2,000 plus during high season, depending on when they went. Conrad Bora Bora Nui is, it was great. I mean, it was an overwater bungalow. Uh, the deck was huge. It was really spacious. And so um, I would say it was well worth that price. I think $1,200 is actually not bad value at all. August 2021, they actually went during high season, so that's pretty good. Uh, you're not really leaving the property that much. Oftentimes, I feel like you're doing activities on resort anyways, other than like maybe snorkeling or going on some other expedition stuff. And Bora Bora, the facilities, it was so, so big that you had to bike throughout. You can also request a golf cart that that still is a thing i remember riding in plenty of golf carts but i think if you don't want to wait and you want to just be faster on stuff then biking isn't too bad thank you bikes are a bit old like they're not the best bikes but they work and it's not like you have traffic you're dodging to kind of get to different restaurants and to get to the spa etc there was kayaking you could snorkel i would bring your own snorkels as well because a lot of stuff is not the best fitting and as someone who probably spent two to four hours snorkeling every day one of the best things you can do bring your own snorkel and also bring a rash guard and sunscreen especially if you're pale and you burn easily mm. my boyfriend has no rhythm whatsoever and he's up here doing like traditional polynesian fun. dances and i still can't get it out of my head so if you want to be a cheapskate and you don't want to participate in it oftentimes you can have dinner at the restaurant that's next to the restaurant that they're having Polynesian night and you can still see everything. The Polynesian night restaurant will be, I think like a hundred to $200 per person, might be buffet style. Really memorable because it was the closest we really got to experiencing Polynesian culture. Lockdown related cancellations, they had extra 500. How does that work? I got a spa service at every single hotel we went to. Spa services are so expensive. We generally don't do it because it's 300 to 500 a pop. Food in French Polynesia is expensive. It is yes. super expensive. In Morea, we did. That already looks like $80 to me. We have a package where we had free breakfast every morning. The rest of it is you're on your own. If you have status, then for most properties, you're going to get free breakfast anyways. And yeah, might be a case of grabbing a card or two. So I would strongly consider it. We got, you know, mimosas mostly. $25. And those would run us from $25. minimum $25. My favorite meal was... That's a $35 meal. Anything that had fresh fish in it. That is like a very traditional dish for French Polynesia. And so I basically stuck with like poke bowls. 100 to 150 a day for food is actually not that bad. We've done less. Like the first time we went, we were a lot less financially willing to pay for stuff. Hey guys, so we're at breakfast. Mandy's lining up and then I'm just taking a look at the food. We pretty much did the free breakfast due to status and then we did the apple diet. So apple diet is pretty much going to a lot of the gyms where they have free apples, especially for someone who intermittent fasts anyways. It's not too big of a deal because you can just time you're eating towards breakfast uh easiest way to do so this is an xpf which is their like frank dollars i think you just remove two zeros is the easiest way to think of it 25 bucks yeah give or take our More. most expensive meal i'd say was the canoe breakfast that we decided to do and that was right from our deck and they have like all of your breakfast on that canoe and they just deliver it to you and they set it up that was around 280 dollars okay. as a side note i think the canoe thing is the least worth the thing ever because if you have status it's the same items from breakfast it's not like it's a new it's the same things, they're just grabbing things, putting it into a basket. So you're pretty much paying a crazy premium in order to do that. I just wouldn't pay 250 for someone to canoe over to me unless they're doing it for the gram and you just really, really want that picture. We do dinners and so we were introduced to like the underground, I believe it's like lava dinners. They start in the morning, dig it up at the end of the day and they feast. And I haven't tried that yet, but it actually looks really good and it's on my list now. So we, we were able to experience that, which was really cool. That's actually really not that bad. So we rented a car and just drove around the island. It was about less than an hour and about $60 to rent the car. So I actually would not 
do this because there's not really much to see around the island. I think there's some tourist spots if you want to buy some clothing. And I'll try to find a screenshot of that if possible. My suggestion would be to pay probably a bit of a premium to go on a guided tour for the day where they show you the upper parts of the island because I think that's a bit cooler. Uh, you can't really do that with a normal car because the roads are crazy. You need like a four wheel drive, uh, not like a normal Civic or anything. I've been to 40 countries now and Bora Bora is incredible. It's definitely somewhere that I would want to visit again. However, the price, if I could do it all over again, just give yourself some time, buy your tickets first for like next year, buy your accommodations for mm. later on in the year because you will need to have the money to really enjoy it to, to the fullest. I would not book flights beforehand because I think that's a recipe for disaster. I would find availability for hotel nights and then just structure that in advance as much as possible. And then you can probably book flights even like two or three months beforehand. You'll still probably be in that 600 to $1,000 price point. So about the same. On a side note, would you have paid $18,000 to do this? Or would you have used credit card points? Or maybe you're saving your points for something else. Let me know down below. How can we use credit cards in order to increase or enhance this trip? Step number one is to be able to get credit cards. So if you don't have a good credit score, I'd recommend improving that first. We have a Vibely course talking about all of this. It's only $8, but it's meant to be a one month bootcamp. If you already have a great score, then that's fine. But if not, and you want to fix your score to do stuff like this, then I'll put a link down below. Second step is to look into benefits of cards. So if you look into certain cards like the Hilton Surpass, then you're going to get gold status from Hilton just by having that card. Cards like the Platinum card also give you gold status. If you want their top level status, you can get Diamond just by getting the Hilton Aspire card. And that's $450 annual fee, but it's a lot more reasonable than you think because you get a certificate night and there's a lot of play there. With gold status, you generally get free breakfast, but you get cold items and you have a chance of upgrades. And then with diamond status, you get full breakfast and you get better upgrades, but it's still a very, your mileage may vary because it depends on the property's mood and the GM's mood and also availability. Step number two is how would you get stays here using your points? I'm going to use current intro bonuses, which might not be the best because it's going to expire at some point and they're probably going to drop down. If you are someone who's interested in cards, whether it's American Express or other issuers and you want to support the channel, we do have links on our website, asksebi.com and also down below in the description box. Make sure they're competitive, but a huge way to support the channel. So thank you guys in advance. All right, cool. So finish off the calculator. Hopefully it makes sense. So you have the MSR, you have the intro bonus and the minimum points that you're getting from the MSR. The idea being that you're getting at least three X back from every dollar, maybe more depending on the categories. If you add up both of these, you're getting 372,000 points and you can actually book the Conrad for 89,000 points per night. That means by getting these two cards, you're already getting four nights. What we're looking for is the standard room rewards. So if you see something like a million points, it's because there's no standard rooms available. So they're going to charge you a lot more. For example, this is November. You can see some dates. So up here, but you're trying to kind of patch together maybe three, four, five nights. So we have one, two, three. You're hoping that these two open up. In that way, it's very beneficial if you have a very flexible work schedule or if you have a lot of vacation time. So 89,000 points for the standard room. Retail price is about $900. This means that we're getting about one cent per point, which is pretty good value. If you have gold or diamond status, it's not impossible to get upgraded into an overwater room. If you want to lock it in, then obviously you have to pay for that. If you don't mind rolling the dice and gambling, then you can get there and see if they'll give you an upgrade. So by doing that minimum spend, we're getting about $3,600 in value. To put that into perspective, you spent $14,000 to get almost $4,000 in value. That's it's about 25, 26% return on your spend. Ironically though, it's not just that because the fact that you have diamond status, you have these other features of the card and for the Aspire card, you end up getting this free certificate night. So it technically only works on weekends, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday nights, but it also works for any of these standard available rooms. You get this just by having the card. So you're paying 450 for an $800 night. That's a no brainer. And people actively pay this as you've seen in the video. The other thing too, is that you're technically not even paying as much as the 450 as you would think, because with that card, you get two different credits, but even if you discount it by a little bit, then you kind of break even from that annual fee. So it pretty much covers that annual fee in full, basically $4,400 in value and return on spend is about 31%. 
The really cool thing with these Hilton cards too is if you realize that this is not the setup for you long term, maybe you don't like doing stuff like this, you can actually downgrade them into no annual fee cards. So given that you can do this with points, out of curiosity, is this something on your list or is Bora Bora not your vibe? Let me know down below. The last thing is going to be Costco and why not just use that? I don't think the value is here. Looking at the Conrad, $4,000 sounds amazing, but this is the price per one person. Another factor is that these dates are really bad. So this is during the rainy season when people generally don't want to go. The high season when people generally want to go to Bora Bora is May to October. So this $3,900 number probably goes up to $5,500 or $6,000 during the peak season when most people want to go or just during the non-rainy season. Okay, so if we look at the Costco rate and then compare it to hers, obviously not one-to-one -one because it's really hard to do that. But for hers, given the price that she paid, number of days that she was there, it's about $771 per night. The Costco package, if you go when she went, is likely going to be about $1,200 per day. Even if it's a little bit cheaper, it's still $1,100 and this is per day per person. If you do the $39.59 number and assume that you can find a great deal then too, it's still about the same price she paid, technically a little bit higher. And honestly, for five nights, I would rather go back to using credit card points and I think that just is more valuable to me. I don't know, I'd rather just spend $14,000 on other things. I'd rather buy a MacBook Pro, buy cameras, buy other stuff and get that trip out of it versus just $8,000 from my pocket. Again, if you want to learn about cards and you want to support the channel, we have links on our site, asksebi.com, and also down below in the description box. With that said, have you booked a Costco travel before or would you rather use points? Let me know down below. Big favor, give this a thumbs up and if you know anyone else who may benefit, share this with them because it'll probably help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time. The people crazy. <laughs> no, uh, I'm serious because uh, here, ah, tourists coming, they coming, tourists. Uh, Tahitian coming, the price down. Oh. <laughs> Your hotel, the bottle water, small one, okay? How much? Six dollar? You got to pay the market. The big bottle, one dollar. <laughs> tourists coming, uh, price. Yeah. Local people, uh, 